bike parking on the strip. Last night we parked next to an elevator. Tonight we're in a corner off the strip in some vegetation. Hope we're well hidden enough. Round two, hope you're still here. <laughs> These are just storage tanks. Okay. Uh, we also use the nano water for other purposes like filling up the trucks that are used to clean the exterior surfaces. Oh. Uh, we use for some of the front features. You know, you must have seen like uh, fountains, mm -hmm. the palazzo port mm -hmm. initially. Okay. We use it for that. Oh. And oh. this is just obviously one of many technologies that we use here. Okay. You know, we also have a very innovative cooling tower water technology. Mm -hmm. We also use very sophisticated irrigation controller systems, mm -hmm. which I'm sure a lot of other people, other companies and use. And that's so. like the moisture sensors? Yeah, things? exactly. Okay. You know, it detects how much water to use for different plant species. Obviously, we have a number of plant species. So there is a room for improvement mm -hmm. every year. We participate in a uh, Carbon Disclosure Project Climate uh, Change Program every year. You know, we made it to the Climate A list for uh, third year in a row. Oh, wow. So there are a lot of recognitions. Just for the property city in we mm -hmm. achieved more than 15 green accolades. Wow.
now the state of Nevada limits where we can use reclaimed water. Mm -hmm. And it also depends on how highly treated that reclaimed water is. So of course, the more treated it is, more options you have for what you can do with it. We were growing, mm -hmm. so we were looking at having to add some capacity for wastewater treatment anyway. And then the idea was if you have the entire city the wastewater treatment plant, the main one, is over here. You could build that satellite facility over here, and as I mentioned earlier, you could have wastewater that is sent to this facility, treated, you create the reclaim, and you're only sending it from that location back to that part of the city. So it was really kind of accommodating the growth of the city out into yeah. the west. Many people who live here are transplants, and they're transplants from places where of course you have grass in your front yard. What else would you have in your front yard? So I think it's just a, a mindset that people have. They come here and they, in a way, want to recreate what they left behind. But mm -hmm. when you look at the, the statistics for this area, and it and it's probably very similar throughout the West, mm -hmm. but something like 70% of our consumptive use of water is all for outdoor irrigation. It's, it's a little it's mind boggling. Yeah. You know, we only get four inches of rain. We're not going to ever be able to rely on rainfall. And so, you know, sometimes we get these incredible deluges in the summertime, and there's storms, you know, runoff everywhere, and it's flooding, and people have this tendency to think, the drought is over. <laughs> and it doesn't even make a, it's not a blip on the level of the lake, mm -hmm. which is really what, what we would need is for that lake level to come up to really boost those resources. And that's like snow upstream was it's what you the really... western flanks of the Rockies is yeah. what everybody always prays for snow out here in the Rockies and it's not for skiing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. gains if you don't have participation and so from a conservation standpoint we really wanted to make sure that our conservation program touched every sector of our community and that we would have buy-in from those sectors we didn't want to put out any sort of regulations or conservation plans that the community wasn't in favor of so in southern Nevada every single water user that is served from a municipal water system has a water meter what that allows us to do is it obviously allows us to build for the appropriate water use. But it also allows us to really see how we're doing in conservation. If we're not metering water, then we really don't know how much water is being used and we don't know where that water is being used. So our metering activity definitely supports our conservation. Our conservation program touches every sector. We didn't put conservation on the backs of residents. We didn't put conservation on the backs of our resorts or on the backs of our commercial customers. Rather, everybody is sharing in conservation. And we've got mandatory watering restrictions across the board. People can only, people, our community, can only water on specific days of the week. And these rules apply to the folks in Henderson, it applies to the folks in North Las Vegas, it applies to the folks within unincorporated Clark County. So everybody has to play by these same rules. A portion of our conservation messaging is put out in very short windows, very short periods of time, two week periods of time, but we saturate the market to make sure that everybody knows, hey, it's time to change your sprinkler clock. Americans should know and keep in mind about water is that it's not free and that it does take a lot of work to get water from point A to point B. And it takes even more work to make sure that when that water does get to point B, that you can drink it and that it is safe
right now we're at Springs Preserve, which is a huge 180 acre um, nature facility. It's open to kids, open to adults, they have happy hour going on right now, and they have all of these educational demonstrations about native plants, native animals, um, talks about water. We're about to go see a flash flood demonstration where they have 10 million gallons of, wait, no, 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 where they have 10,000 <laughs> gallons of water rushing beneath your feet to simulate flash floods and the danger of that in the Las Vegas Valley. So we got pretty private premier access from our friends at the Las Vegas Valley Water District um, and we're excited to be here to learn all there is. <laughs> 